be turned on a dime. It hasn't really allowed a space for reflection, psychologically, emotionally, to think about what has happened. As a primary care physician, I've had many patients who have had many, many family members die of COVID. My clinic's near the mausoleum where the Stanford family is buried, and I frequently walk there at lunch. And I thought, what more fitting place to have a remembrance and commemoration and celebration of life. Leland Stanford Jr. was the son of the Stanfords, and he died of typhoid when he was only 16. He was their only child, and so in their grief and heartache, the Stanfords decided to create Stanford University and said, now all the children of California will be their children. They transformed that grief into something so amazingly wonderful and positive that all of us have benefited from and will continue to benefit from. Dr. Lynn and I had started talking about a way to recognize the number of lives lost to COVID when it reached 100,000. And we thought about doing it at a concert. And then we really hoped that we could do something larger for the campus community. And that's when I reached out to Tiffany Steinwert in the Office of Religious Life. We needed, as a community, a way both to honor and remember the immensity of the loss. Both the individuals who lost their lives, the families and friends who've loved them, but also the loss of what life was like pre-pandemic. So in that moment, I knew we needed to do it. I just didn't know how. Um, but Bryant Lynn and Jackie Genovese and Chris Costanza actually did know how. In short order, we got some ideas going and I started to compile a playlist of music uh, that the walker could listen to. Uh, and I decided I wanted to feature Stanford performers and uh, composers. Uh, and then the, the project started to, to develop and, it, and it, it got more and more exciting and more and more involved in a sense. We had some brainstorming sessions and incorporated too what we were hearing from our friends and colleagues, particularly those on the front lines. So right now we have the Sound Walk, which is a music remembrance. We also wanted to have an opportunity for people to contribute their stories related to COVID through an app or a website and a physical area of remembrance which is, will be designed by Lauren Toomer to allow a and to create a space of reflection about uh, losses and changes over the past year due to COVID. I think the Sound Walk is an opportunity for our campus to come together and it offers people a brief spot in their day to think about what this pandemic has meant to them and to do so surrounded by beauty of the campus, of the landscape, and of the music. As a community, we as individuals will not be able to move on without a period of grieving. Grieving empowers us, enables us to move on. We do have to move on. I mean, you have to, you have to move on with your life, but it doesn't mean you, you shouldn't grieve. We learn to find a balance. We learn to, to, to remember what we've lost. We learn to grieve in the context of, of moving on. Allowing ourselves to go through that process, whatever that process is, however long it takes, is fundamental to us carrying on with our own lives. Grief and love are actually two sides of the same coin. And so gr the grieving process is a way of honoring that love. We can't heal if we can't tell the story and if we can't acknowledge 
and honor that grief.